Hello, my name is Michelle Hoekstra and I am a P4 pharmacy student from Creighton University. I will be presenting to you today the vaccine use in infants from the NICU primer for pharmacists. So why do we vaccinate our NICU babies? First of all, the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics recommend administering vaccines based on postnatal age and not based on their corrected age. And then we need to look at the time spent in the NICU. Some NICU infants often spend months of their lives in the NICU and need to receive their vaccinations, whether it's their two month, four month or six month vaccine. Also another thing to think about is maternal antibodies are passed down to a fetus after 32 weeks of gestation. Those infants who are born before 32 weeks are not, are not able to get those antibodies, antibodies and are at an increased risk for vaccine preventable diseases. The first vaccine that infants are exposed to is the hepatitis B vaccine. This is a three dose series that is given at birth, at two months and six months. At least 20 day, 28 days need to be between the doses and the mothers are tested for hepatitis B surface antigens before delivery. And if they are positive, then those at birth should receive the hepatitis B vaccine as well as the hepatitis B immuno, immune, immune globin as well regardless of their weight. If mothers are surface antigen negative, if the baby is older, bigger than two kilograms, they should receive the hepatitis B at birth. Less than two kilograms, they can at least wait until 30 days of age, whether or not they are medical, medically stable or if they are prior to discharge. If the hepatitis B surface antigen is unknown at birth, then the infant, if they are less than two kilograms, should receive the hepatitis B and the hepatitis B immunoglobin as well. And there is a vaccine that is a combination product that has the hepatitis B and the CDC says it is okay if the infant receives four doses permitted when the combination product is used. Next are the two, four, and six month vaccines. These are the inactivated polio virus or IPV, the diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, known as the DTAP, haemophilus influenza, the HIV, pneumococcal conjugate, the Prevnar 13, and the combination product that I was referring to is the Pediarix, which combines DTAP, hepatitis B, and polio. If you note on the chart, the HIP and the rotavirus, the six month doses are dependent on whether or not which brand is given. And I will explain more about that on the next few slides. So the HIP, the Haemophilus influenza type B can cause pneumonia, meningitis and bloodstream infections. And note that there are several brand names that have different dosing intervals. The, PED, the PEDVAX HIB is a three dose series that is given at two, four, and tw between 12 and 15 months. Whereas the ACT HIB, Hibarix, Penticil is a four dose series that is given at two, four, six, and at 12 to 15 months. So it's important to know which brand the infant is given to, what, to make sure you get three doses or four doses based on that brand. Next is the rotavirus vaccine. This can cause watery diarrhea and vomiting. And the recommended starting age for this vaccine is a minimum of six weeks and maximum of 14 weeks and six days. It is also important to note that the Rototech and Rotorix are live vaccines and these vaccines can be shed in the stool for up to 14 days post vaccine. So it's important to practice good hand hygiene when handling soiled diapers 
so that the transmission of this vaccine, this uh, the, the transmission is not passed on to others. And note that there are two different brand names, the Rotatec, which is a three dose series that is given at least four weeks apart, and the Rotarix, which is a two dose series that is given at least four weeks apart. Vaccine administration is either done IM or sub Q, depending on the recommendations by the manufacturer. So it's important to note what the manufacturer recommends as far as where to give the vaccine. Rotavirus is the only PO oral medication, only oral vaccine. The needle length should be at least five to eight inches and no bigger than that. And the CDC recommends that the vaccine be administered in the anterior lateral thigh, as you can see in the picture. Adverse effects of vaccine administration include injection site reactions, fever, decreased appetite. More serious effects include nerve damage, abscess formation, post immunization apnea, which can occur up to 48 hours after the vaccine is administered. So this should be monitored. And discharged infants should delay vaccines until at least they're 70 days old if they are at risk for apnea-induced vaccine, apnea that is induced by vaccines. In order to minimize pain, it was once noted that Tylenol or acetaminophen could be given before vaccinations. Today, this is not recommended due to it having a negative effect on the immune response. After vaccine administration is recommended at a dose of 10 to 15 mg per kg every six to eight hours. Also, you can use sucrose with or without nutrients nutritive sucking is recommended two minutes prior to the administration, as well as skin-to-skin -skin holding to comfort the child. Lidocaine 4% cream can be used one hour prior to the vaccine administration, as well as lidocaine plus prilocaine, which is noted as EMLA, but this should be used with caution in those that are less than three months of age due to the increased risk of methemoglobinemia, which is an abnormal amount of meth methemoglobin that is produced. So in conclusion, vaccines help protect our preterm infants from vaccine preventable diseases. And these vac vaccines should be given to our preterm infants based on their postnatal age not their gestational age or corrected age. And pharmacists can help play an important role in vaccine recommendations and education to our parents. My references, this came from the, the NICU primer for pharmacists as well as the CDC immunization schedule for ages 18 years or younger. Thank you.